Hey guys, this is Jan from Amorphis, and you are watching the Age of Metal. Hey everyone, this is Miguel with DH Metal. I'm here today with Jan of Amorphis. Welcome back to the country after almost what eight years? No, we're well, like almost ten years, huh? Yeah, I think we with what uh, uh, last time, two thousand eight, with with the Silent Waters album. However, we played a couple of shows uh, in LA with Nightwish and uh, in Baltimore Metal Fest and. 70,000 tons of metal, if that counts, but I don't think it does. But but yeah, uh, it's like, like a complete tour, I think it's been nine years back or so. And I think, Jan, this is the first time that you guys play in Arizona, if I'm not wrong, because I don't remember that you guys played last time with Samael and Virgin Black here. Last time, well, I'm not sure if, if it did, but uh, the tour before, the 2005, with the first tour with Tommy Oates and Avocas in, in America, we played Tempe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so so I, I don't remember the venue, it was a different venue than this one, but um, yeah. Well, I, I think I've been here playing in Arizona at least once. And back in the days, uh, 94 with the Tales from the Thousand Legs album, when we toured with N2, and we also played uh, in Arizona. Okay. Now, uh, how's been the response for this tour from you guys, you know, coming back after almost nine years of absence, how's been the reactions of the fans? It has been very, very good, very positive and, and like, you know, seems like people have been waiting for us all these years, which is good and uh, we didn't actually know what to expect due to the fact that we've, we've been away that far, um, that, that a long time, I mean. And, uh, so it's, it's been really, really positive. A lot of people, and it's been really good. And we have a good package. All of the sun is with us, and it's like uh, two, two uh, well-known bands from Finland. So that obviously make, makes better turnout for the audience and stuff. Yeah. Now, um, why did it took so long to get back to the United States? Well, we've been doing very well in, in Finland and in Europe, and uh, there's a lot of demand there, and uh, also. We played a lot of shows in Japan and Australia and stuff, and and uh, sometimes, like economically, touring in the states can be hard. You know that we we try to make some sort of sense in the touring, also since we are doing this professionally and we have families to support and stuff like that. So we can't just go touring and come back with empty pockets. So that's not possible. But obviously, this tour made sense, and 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 like. Um, and uh, we are more than willing to tour in the United States and, and Canada more often if, yeah. if, if, the, if the turnout is like this and, 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 and you know, it's, yeah, as I said, it's hard, it's expensive and stuff if, if you want to have a bus and a crew and everything and touring in the States is really expensive for the visas and everything so Maybe that's one of the main reasons we actually don't tour here so much, but maybe in the future we can change that. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we can see a Morpheus more often in the States. Uh, this tour is a little bit longer, it seems like it's a month and some weeks. Uh, what, what has been your favorite show or town so far? Well, there's been too many to pick, pick just one, but obviously Canada was great, uh, Toronto, Montreal. Quebec City, uh, Vancouver, Edmonton, Canada's been really, really good for us. But also, also in the US, it's been really, really positive and surprising. Uh, LA, we played just a couple of nights back, it was great. And uh, Seattle, there's a lot of, lot of places. I, I can't just name one because there's a lot of diehard fans in, in all the venues we've been playing. So, I mean, uh, they all deserve recognition as. As, as to be part of the great show, you know. Now, um, in a personal note, what do you like the most about touring America? What do you enjoy among coming here? Well, now when we're finally down south, the sun, okay. <laughs> because we're from Finland and it's dark all the right. time and stuff like that. And actually, it was hard at the beginning of the tour. It was hard. We got stuck in a blizzard in New York. We had to cancel shows, and we were basically freezing our asses off. So now we're finally here. So okay. I must say it's the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With four albums since the last time that you were here, plus the back catalog, how difficult it gets to put together a set list for a tour like this? How difficult? 
very difficult. <laughs> and obviously there is lots of uh, tracks we would like to play and we would like to play also a longer set than we do now, but the fact that there is a long tour and, and we also want to give Swallow the Sun a proper set list and then there's also many local bands every night, so, so we can't make it like over 90 minutes every night. It's, we have to save Tommy's voice, for example, and 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 yeah, it is very hard, but uh, we try to make a, a set list that is uh, covering the kind of a cornerstones of, of the band's history. So it is very hard and, and I hate it every time we have to do it. But <laughs> And there's six guys in the band and everybody's having a different opinion and, you know, stuff like that. But, but it's hard, but usually we end up picking good songs and, and end up... Um, building a set list that that is making sense in in a dramaturgical you know uh sense so people are seems to enjoy the set list and now under the red cloud is an amazing record definitely was one of the best of 2015 but what is next in order to top a record as good as that one well <laughs> they will never think that we have to top something you know uh, we've been lucky enough to that pretty much all the records we did since Tommy joined the band has been very kind of highly acclaimed albums, and 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 we had that question after Eclipse and after Skyforger and you know, uh, but we don't necessarily feel that we have to top anything, and and we do the the music as we are used to do you know all the time uh, during the whole band's career and stuff and is that things just happen that the songs come out and the band shapes them to be the ones on the record and uh, uh we don't really think things like that we don't think like we have to make a certain kind of album or now we have to really fucking do the best we can or something like that it just happens and like an uh, unintentional way, so, so to speak. So, yeah. Now, for this tour, Nuclear Blast release a tour edition for the album. What is new on this edition? Well, there's a live CD. Yeah, there's a live CD from, from a special event we did. We did in Helsinki last summer uh, with, with Anneke, one of the guests back from, from uh, I don't remember her band. <laughs> uh, Are you guys in the writing process of a new album or the cycle of Under the Red Cloud will continue a bit longer? Well, you know, after this tour we have some shows in Russia and, and then you know, we go to uh, some festivals in one of Europe. It's like the uh, late summer and then the next fall is completely reserved for the writing process and we go to studio in November so so uh, probably, you know, some guys already written some material, but we haven't actually listened to anything yet. So finish the touring first and then probably focus on the But new material is coming next year. So. Oh, nice. That's good to hear. Now, um, a few years ago, you toured Europe and South America playing the whole Taste of a Thousand Lakes record. We'll see more of that type of full record tour style? Well, yeah, it is possible. And we also did Eclipse shows in Europe and in Finland. And now we're going to do the Eclipse show in Russia also. So, yeah, it is possible. But, I mean, with the taste, it was the anniversary year when we did that touring. And, I mean, if there's probably demand for that, and then we can certainly certainly take it under consideration but you know it's always a lot of a lot of stuff to to be considered and and uh but it was fun to play the tales and, and we'll probably do that again <laughs> now uh you are one of the founder members of amorphis uh when the band started back in the early 90s before bands like nightwish children Bloom, even him uh did you ever told that you know amorphis could become a uh, key piece of what we uh, will be a head spear movement of Finnish metal around the world? No, I don't think we intentionally considered that as a, any possibility back in the days, but you know, we, we just did our thing and, and we were young and passionate about metal and, and, and 
doing something different than other guys are doing. I never imagined that they would influence the whole generation to make melodic death metal. But but uh, as it seems that it is, and and I think it's really cool, and we are really touched by to, to hear uh, you know young musicians that are uh, really inspiring them and stuff like that. So obviously it's a great honor. Is it still weird you out? to see many bands claiming to have a Morpheus and as an influence for their music? Yeah, yeah, that, that, well, that's what I have kind of said, and, and uh, yeah, it's, it happens. The, we meet a lot of, lot of guys that, that they've been young when Tales came out and stuff like that, and it has been affecting their, their career or their choices in their style of music and stuff like that, and I think it's great to hear that it's, it's really, you know, makes you feel that we've been doing something that matters. So yeah, yeah, right, right. Closing up, what is next for Morpheus after this tour? And you know, probably, how long do we have to wait to see you guys again? Well, I don't, I don't know. I can't make any promises for now. But we definitely have plans to come back to the U.S. again. And and after this tour, as I told you before, we we we. Uh, we do summer festivals in Europe and uh, some uh, like little tour in Russia, and uh, also then then obviously concentrate on a new album. And so the next next autumn is going to be completely dedicated for 